Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us on this first edition of the program Views on the Continent uh, for the weekend. You're most welcome to the Pan-African Television Africa Media where we want to examine the uh, complex uh, relationship between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, uh, and of course our topic for today uh, has Ukraine's uh, pursuit of our Western uh, agenda hindered its ability to seek diplomatic solutions with Russia as far as the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis is uh, concerned. And today uh, we are joined uh, by an uh, extreme uh, personality who will give us uh, uh, insightful perspectives uh, on uh, this important uh, issue regarding a topic for discussion uh, this day and of course uh, it's with uh, uh, great uh, delight that I introduce Mr. Dmitry Polyansky who is uh, Russia's uh, first deputy uh, permanent representative uh, at the United Nations. He'll be answering uh, a number of questions regarding a topic for discussion uh, this day, and of course, uh, which will help us to dive into uh, a, a thought-provoking uh, moment and gain a deeper understanding uh, of the dynamics at play in uh, this uh, crucial geopolitical relationship uh, patterning the uh, Ukraine-Russia crisis. And of course, we are going to dive straight away uh, to our first uh, question directed to Mr. Dmitry. Of course, the question uh, dates to the genesis of, of the crisis. And of course, the, the uh, armed uh, conflict in Ukraine uh, is rooted in 2014 when uh, the coup d'etat in Kyiv led to the confrontation in the Donbass. Uh, of course, this question uh, directing particularly to you, sir, is uh, what role did uh, the Western uh, countries uh, play in those uh, events? Really, the, the Western countries uh, played a very crucial and very negative role in the Ukrainian tragedy, uh, which epochs we are witnessing today. Uh, exactly 10 years ago tomorrow, uh, day by day, uh, we will uh, take note of the 10th anniversary of the so-called Maidan, the uh, protests that erupted in uh, Kiev after uh, President at that moment Yanukovych uh, decided not to sign the association agreement between Ukraine and uh, European Union. Uh, saying that he needs uh, a little bit more time to evaluate the consequences for the country after the implementation of this document. It followed uh, several months of uh, very uh, deep deliberations between all sides, European side, Ukrainian side, Russian side, when we tried to explain uh, what will be the consequences and uh, how it will affect uh, bilateral relations and trade between uh, Ukraine and Russia. It was nothing but about trade, uh, and the the input, uh, the the impact would have been uh, devastating. Uh, we were proving this with figures, and uh, our Ukrainian colleagues, a lot of our Ukrainian colleagues, uh, including those working with uh, President Yanukovych, were not aware of this. Were not aware of these calculations and modeling of uh, how it will develop. So at some point of time, when the information has become uh, overwhelming, they decided to make this U-turn to pause, not to denounce, but to pause the signature of the association agreement. But the problem is that by that time, uh, the West, uh, which has invested a lot of money in the uh, formation of the NGOs and other uh, civil society actors who, who were promoting pro-Western agenda, were um, trying to introduce uh, in, into the heads of Ukrainian citizens the idea that they should uh, disrupt any ties with Russia and that Ukraine's future in, is within the European Union and NATO and that they will be welcomed there uh, wholeheartedly. Those NGOs were already working and they were not ready uh, to denounce and they were not ready to, to wait. So they decided to, to, to come to action. Uh, and these uh, protests were also preceded by uh, several years of very intense uh, uh, nourishing of uh, very 
radical Ukrainian nationalism. So uh, several years before that, um, during the presidency of uh, predecessor of Mr. Yanukovych, Mr. Yushchenko, uh, Bandera, uh, one of uh, Hitler's uh, collaborators, uh, was announced to be a hero of Ukraine. And a lot of ideology which were which has never been present in Ukraine was uh, introduced from the western part of this country from those who, who came back from immigration from those who were children and grandchildren of, of children and grandchildren of those who were uh, fighting alongside with with fascists against against the Red Army who were committing the crimes of Holocaust and prosecution of uh, many uh hundreds of thousands of, of jews of russians of ukrainians uh of other nationalities of poles so uh at the at this moment uh, exactly 10 years ago the protests erupted and then uh it came to the apex uh, in february of the next year uh when uh the uh, attempts of, of president yanukovych to make a deal with uh with the opposition uh, the uh, the attempts that were uh, crowned by a draft agreement uh, which was guaranteed by several European countries when it was uh, absolutely uh, denounced by the opposition the next day when it was signed and instead of pursuing the road to national dialogue uh, they uh, ousted uh, President uh, Yanukovych did it in a very unconstitutional manner with the direct involvement of uh, actors from from the West, uh, some of them very prominent figures, like Victoria Nuland, who was coming repeatedly during the Maidan protests, uh, which at some point uh, became very very violent, and there were uh, several dozens of people killed uh, in a very mysterious circumstances, uh, and there has never been a proper investigation, and a lot of people. Uh, basing their position on the on the documents, uh, believe that this was a clear cut provocation uh, from the opposition, uh, and then the the events started to develop in an uncontrollable manner, and um, uh, there was a lot of violence. Uh, some people in Ukraine, in eastern and southern Ukraine, didn't accept uh, the uh, new ideals that were imposed on them. Uh, by the new authorities, they were saying that they don't want to uh, to support them, and there was a lot of violence uh, from the part of of the new Maidan authorities. There was a very uh, heinous massacre in Odessa uh, on the 9th of May, when uh, well, about 50 people uh, were burnt alive uh, only because of the fact that they didn't want to submit. Uh, uh to the uh to the nationalists and they were defending their rights as russian speakers and as those who live in odessa uh there were violent events in uh, in mariupol by that time the residents of crimea uh looking at the scope of the violence uh, that was uh engulfing the country decided to uh return back to russia and also uh, in the summer of of the next year uh, instead of having a dialogue with the eastern regions uh, who said that they don't want to support the maidan coup uh, the uh, ukrainian authorities uh, declared a war uh, against the residents of donbass and that's how uh, this current uh, current stage of ukrainian tragedy has started after the uh, residential areas of of donetsk and lugansk were being shelled uh, the uh, residents the local residents uh, took uh, arms and uh, created uh, self militias that were uh, trying to stop the aggression of ukrainian army against uh, against its own citizens and this all uh, was uh, lasting for uh, for 9 years for 8 years before the start of the special military operation of uh, russia in ukraine uh, we uh, tried to find a, a deal uh, to help uh, the Eastern Ukrainians uh, to find a deal uh, with uh, with the uh, Ukrainian government uh, to strike this deal. But actually, the Minsk agreements that were uh, signed uh, a year after the eruption of this uh, violence uh, were not implemented 
by uh, Ukrainian re regime, uh, and uh, it was all done with the active involvement uh, and uh, by, by of the West, and the West was of course mastermining uh, the uh, all the actions of uh, Ukrainian uh, government of Kiev regime. That's why we believe that the West uh, shares the uh, responsibility uh, and is the primary responsible uh, party for what Ukraine is uh, is witnessing uh, right now. Uh, Dmitry, uh, quite 